Hi, this is Jeffrey Geske. I'm a fellow at Mayo Clinic. I'm here with Dr. Murphy. Thanks so much for joining us. Dr. Murphy is a professor of medicine, one of the cardiology board review lecturers, as well as the author of the Mayo Clinic cardiology board review text. Dr. Murphy, thanks for joining us. Can you tell me a little bit about what sort of things you would recommend as, as critical things for people to do as they're preparing for the cardiology uh, examination? <clears throat> Thank you very much, Jeff. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, my advice with regard to the cardiology board examination or with any of the other medical boards is the time to prepare is as you see patients and the time to prepare is not the last three or four months prior to the exam so that I, I would uh, like to think of our course as a capstone review but all the hard work should be done during your fellowship and that's a more interesting and painless way to learn in other words when you see a particularly interesting patient patient with constrictive pericarditis patient with amyloid heart disease uh, that that is the time to read about it and the whole development of point of care learning the emphasis is now on learning when you see the patient and that these board review courses are intended to be capstones that will review a lot of the knowledge that you've gained, gained put it in perspective, but that this is not the time to gain the initial knowledge. And as, as learners are going through and kind of doing this point of care learning, what sort of resources would you recommend as they gather knowledge for the, these exams? I think one of the great things is there's lots of resources, uh, both as uh, books and electronic resources. As you know, we now have both a textbook and an electronic version, a Kindle version of our cardiology textbook. There are lots of other uh, resources that Mayo provides in the form of this uh, wonderful cardiology board review course uh, with lots of online learning products. Uh, Mayo has a very extensive uh, portfolio of uh, talks and uh, seminars and reviews. And there are multiple other sources of you know, wonderful education learning uh, through the uh, learned societies and through the other major academic institutions. Great. Well, with all those resources out there and, and the advice that you've given, can you leave us with maybe one final trick or one final tip that you would say to people as they're, as they're kind of preparing for this examination? What's one, one way that you would say to really ace the boards? So, so the first thing that I would tell you is um, the board assesses one specific attribute of a cardiologist. In other words, your ability to integrate knowledge it does not test whether you're a compassionate, caring cardiologist. So that I, I would distinguish between you as a cardiologist and, and you passing the exam. So with regard to passing the exam, the, the one thing I would say is to think about multiple choice strategies. And I, you know, I, I've given a lecture on this, which will be available. And to say that every question needs to give you marks. In other words, even if you don't know the correct answer, it's important to guess strategically. And that if you think about the multiple choice format, it basically is a statistical format. And you are expected to guess incorrect, you're, you're expected to guess answers, even if you're not completely sure of what the correct answer is. But essentially, leave no marks on the table even if you're not sure of the absolute correct answer. Remember that the strategy of the board is that the questions with the highest discriminant value have a 50% correct ascertainment. In other words, they want about 50% of candidates to get the question right and obviously 50% wrong. And that is the most powerful discriminant uh, question so that the cardiology boards and indeed other professional exams will tax you. Mm -hmm. If you find that the questions are too easy, there's a high probability that many of those questions will be discarded. It's within the purview of the boards to, dis to, to uh, disallow questions after the exam. So that the questions that are important for the boards are the ones with this high discriminant value. Now, to be fair, if a lot of people are getting a question wrong or the question appears to be unfair, that will also be thrown out after the exam. 
So what I would say to you is don't leave any marks on the table on any question and don't try and overanalyze the questions as to where you th which ones you thought you got right or wrong because in many cases those strange questions will, will, will be excluded. So remember that this is a fair exam. It is written by clinicians. These questions are very well worked. They're very well tested. So the idea is that this is as close to clinical practice that the board can get. But in general, it's considered a fair exam. It's a tough exam, but it is reflective of real world cardiology. And when you think about it, these are the type of patients that you will see in your practice. And to some extent, it's a test of yourself and of your training that you are competent to take care of these very complex uh, patients. And, you know, as a final word, I would wish everybody, you know, every success. And certainly at Mayo Clinic, we're here to help you in any way that we can. And I think we have a very comprehensive portfolio of uh, courses and lectures and books and electronic products to kind of help you with that. Great. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Murphy. My pleasure.